Welcome everybody. My name is John Finney. I'm the general manager of regional and community utilities for the regional district of Nanaimo. I'm also currently the chair of CABI. What a great turnout. You know, we, we started this uh, process to have this workshop thinking, well, if we were really lucky, we might get 25 or 30 people out. And uh, we decided to put a cap on the attendance just in case it got a little bit higher than that. And I think we're we're at about 52 or 53 registered people, so it's really good to see the interest and glad to see uh, all of you here. I understand we've got um, people from far away, even. I mean, a lot, lots of folks from, there are some folks from uh, the mainland and Abbotsford area and so on, so it's, uh, it's good to see you interested in the topic and uh, welcome to our workshop. Um, I'm, I'm going to follow some notes that I jotted down so I don't get off track and start babbling like I sometimes do. And uh, I want to be fairly concise so we can get into the actual meat of the session. Um, today we're going to talk about conservation oriented water pricing. And in, in my opinion it's, it's more than, than just charging more for water to conserve water. Uh, there's a number of things associated with, with that approach. It's a balance between charging enough for water so that in parts of conservation ethic, uh, balancing uh, user rate revenues with taxation revenues to ensure that our, our water systems can be adequately maintained, and having a pricing strategy that provides affordable water for basic household use. That said, water pricing uh, is probably one of the most effective water conservation tools we have, water pricing and metering. Uh, we're, we're kind of aware of the um, comments that Canada, well, British Columbia, I guess, has one of the highest water consumption uses on the planet and uh, about the lowest water pricing. Um, on the other end of the scale, there's places like Germany and other European countries that have among the lowest water consumption per capita in the world and the highest water pricing. So, there's got to be some sort of a relationship there and uh, you know we're going to talk about that today and, and a number of other things as well. Um, hopefully if I can get this. We had some problems with this. Um, oh. No, I don't think so. Okay. So today's initiative, why we're doing this, largely came from some discussions between Polis and the Regional District of Nanaimo. Uh, the Regional District of Nanaimo has a drinking water watershed protection initiative, which some of you may be aware of. It's the first, uh, we understand it's the first such regional district function in British Columbia with um, taxation authority for drinking water protection. It's got a number of components, and we're going to, we'll hear a little bit more about the initiative this afternoon, but one of the, one of the drop downs of the, uh, of the program is water conservation. Uh, re the Regional District of Nanaimo has been promoting water conservation as part of its Team Water Smart program. We, we see benefits to it and we think it's, it's working. If you're not familiar with it, uh, please go to our website and you can download the Action for Water plan there. There's a little bit of a sidebar on that. Um, last week, I, uh, Mike Donnelly and I and one of our other staff were at the um, provincial uh, workshop on the water science strategy. And they were, yeah, they were pulling people together to try and give them direction on establishing a water science strategy for the province. And you know, it was an okay workshop, but what, what we left with um, was a feeling that the regional district in Nanaimo and it, its action for water plan is, is on the right track. We, one of the components of our action for water plan is actually an education information sharing, information gathering protocol. Um, and we saw that as a water science strategy. So we left there with differing opinions of the workshop. We felt really good that we were right on the track of the province was wanting to go in terms of the water science strategy. So once again, we're setting the standard, right? Um, the other component is POLIS. Uh, and it's uh, just published, I think you've got a copy of their primer on conservation oriented water pricing, Worth Every Penny, which is the lead into today's uh, workshop. 
So Polis and RDN, Oliver, Grandis, and myself were talking one day and thought having a workshop on water pricing, water conservation pricing would be a good idea. So here we are. Water is, um, is a balance of water in and water out. Or water out and water in, however you want to read it. And water in is a balance of hydrology, weather, time, geology, some other factors. Water out is a function of various water uses by society, by ecology, by industry. And in the equation, there's an inherent safety factor that's built in that keeps that equation in balance. <coughs> Unfortunately, that, um, that safety factor has been decreasing in, in the years, and uh, as our population water consumption and our wastage increases. Maintaining the balance is essential for life and livelihoods and water conservation and reducing water wastage plays a significant role in keeping that equation balanced. So today we're going to have some, some this morning actually, we'll have some dialogue on water conservation oriented water pricing. And hopefully some ideas that you can take back to your own shops on pricing improvements for your own jurisdiction. Um, Pricing, there isn't one kind of size fits all for water pricing. It's, it's individual and specific to your own jurisdiction and your own needs and your own systems, but a lot of the principles can be transferred. <coughs> um, this afternoon, you'll hear a little bit more about the Regional District of Nanaimo's Drinking Water and Watershed Protection Program and the pricing strategy that we've developed within that program. And there'll be some discussion around cost-effective servicing and sustaining the water resource. Kim will get into it later, but unfortunately, we, uh, Glenn Brown is ill today and not able to make it, but hopefully it'll be somebody else from the organization to speak. Wally on. Wells. Yeah, Wally Wells. So part of the day is going to be uh, talking heads. Um, they're going to provide you a blend of theory and practice. But one of the, one of the important, important features of these CAVI Learning Lunch um, series events is the interaction and the learning and the exchange of information. So we encourage you to do that at the breaks or when you get the opportunity. And uh, there will be opportunities in the day for town hall sharing and for, uh, for learning for yourself. Kim Stevens is the project coordinator for the Water Sustainability Action Plan for the <coughs> He's going to facilitate the rest of the session today and, and introduce the speakers and keep us on track, uh, keep us on time, and he's pretty invaluable in keeping Cavi moving and keeping us on track. So before Kim takes